Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with my 11th Christmas DIY video for this year. I have 10 gingerbread themed fun, easy budget DIYs for you. So let's get started. For today's first DIY, I'm gonna show you how you can take some cute ornaments and add them to these wood crates using some scrapbook paper and some chalk paint. So I got this set of two wood crates in Target's Dollar Spot. They were originally five. I got them when they were on clearance for $2.50. And I'm going to give the front edge a coat of my Crimson chalk paint. So I'm going all the way around that front edge it's okay if I get a little bit on the inside because I'm going to cover that up with scrapbook paper. I'm also going to go all the way around the four sides doing this stripe in crimson and I'm gonna do that on the bottom stripe as well and then do that to both crates. Then for that middle stripe, I'm going to use this teal colored chalk paint that I've used before. It is a Martha Stewart in the color Lagoon, but you can just use whatever other color paint you would like. I'm just going with red and teal for my Christmas kitchen decor, especially around my coffee bar. So once that paint is all the way dry, you can see I took two different pieces of scrapbook paper there, and I'm going to apply a thin layer of Mod Podge to the bottom of my crate, and then put in the scrapbook paper, laying that down and smoothing it out. I chose scrapbook paper that I just had on hand from a paper pad from Michaels, um, using these fun red and teal and some pinks as well. These two ornaments I just got this year at Dollar General in their Christmas section. And I loved that it was the red and teal and I thought it would go well with my gingerbread theme in my kitchen. So once I removed the hangers, I can just hot glue that down right onto the center of the bottom of my crate there. And I will do that to the round ornament as well. So those ornaments were each $1. I spent $2.50 on the set of crates. And now I have another cute stackable decor that I can add to my kitchen for my gingerbread theme. For my second DIY, I'm going to show you one of the projects that is available from Magnolia Design Company. This set of five standing trees and the Christmas tree patterns stencil. And so it comes with this base with the five slits and then it comes with two of these larger straight edge triangle trees and then three of these smaller trees. These are a MDF and they're really good quality. I gave them all two coats of white Waverly chalk paint on the front and back. Now remember when you use a stencil, especially for the first time, you're going to want to fuzz it on the tacky cloth just to get some of the extra um, adhesive off so your stencil doesn't stretch when you take it off. I will say the hardest part of this project was getting the stencil centered how I wanted it on the tree, but if you just kind of press down on the edges, you can get it um, centered there so the design will be centered in the shape of the Christmas tree. So I got four of my trees ready. There are two triangle shapes designs and two of this Christmas tree design. So you do repeat one of the patterns for the third small tree. All right, so I'm using the chalk paste from Magnolia Design Company. This is Candy Apple Red. And just using my squeegee, you're just going to drag it across the mesh stencil so that it fills in all the spaces on the mesh and then get off any excess blobs. And when you peel up your stencil, you get a really, really beautiful image. Now I'm gonna plan on doing a different color of these designs on the back side of my trees, maybe like gold for winter once Christmas is over. 
So then you can just arrange your trees in the holes how you like them, and then these are ready to display. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I hope you enjoy what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And also be sure to set your notifications so YouTube will notify you whenever I upload new content. If you are returning, if you are one of my subscribers or viewers, welcome back. Thank you so much for your support. For DIY number three, I figure you can't have a gingerbread themed kitchen without a gingerbread cookie jar. So I'm using one of these plastic cookie jars from Dollar Tree, um, one of these felt gingerbread stickers and some spray paint. I'm also using these wood letters. I believe these were from Dollar General. They're a little bit smaller and have more straight edges than the ones at Dollar Tree. Now, if you can't find one of these plastic cookie jars, I know they have glass ones at some Dollar Trees as well. So I picked out the letters to put the word cookies and then this gingerbread sticker was just a little too big. So once I trimmed off the white outside layer, he was able to fit a little bit better on my lid. And I did leave the lid clear on purpose so that you could see the cookies inside. You can see I spray painted the base of the cookie jar with colonial red spray paint. And then I'm sorry to say I can't tell you where these fake cookies came from. I got them from a thrift store. Someone had donated them, but I'm sure you could search them on Amazon. Then I did color the letters to spell cookies, the teal, kind of going along with my red and teal theme. I just used my paint marker and then now I am hot gluing them in that rounded shape on the front of my lid and I did stick down my little Dollar Tree felt gingerbread man sticker as well and then we're ready to set this on our cookie jar. So super easy but grab yourself a plastic or glass cookie jar from Dollar Tree and you can make one of these as well. DIY number four is a ribbon tree. I am going to try to make one of these. I've seen them, they're beautiful. I'm using a styrofoam cone, a little wood candle cup for the top, and this ribbon I got at Michael's this year. Now my original plan was to use this ribbon for the entire tree. However, once I got one layer, you'll see in a second, of three inch strips is what I'm cutting, um, I ran out. And when I went back to Michael's, they were completely gone. So lesson learned, I'll show you what I did to modify my idea. I'm also taking this wood candle cup and painting it red. It will go on the top of the tree. So this is how I decided to make my little loops. I just kind of put the two ends on top of each other. And then once that's glued, I'm gluing the top there to the tree. I think you can kind of see how I'm doing that and I'm just gonna go all the way around. Like I said, this striped ribbon, I only got the first layer around the base of the tree, but my cone kept rolling around, so I decided to glue it to one of these candlestick pillar things from Dollar Tree so that it would be a lot easier to work with and give some extra height. So, like I said, I went back to Michael's, they were out of that cute candy striped ribbon, so I had to come back and raid my ribbon stash and find any red ribbons that I had. So my next layer, this is actually a Dollar Tree ribbon as well, is just a slightly thicker grow grain ribbon. So I did do, I believe, four inch lengths for this one so that it could make that loop. And you can see I'm just going up and it just, um, the loop of this row is just going to cover the ends. Then I had to pull out a red and white gingham check. What I was worried about is some of my red ribbons look kind of orange next to some of these. So um, thankfully with my ribbon stash, I had enough 
that I could complete this tree. And I actually think I like how it turned out with all the different ribbons better than if it would have all been the same ribbon. So if at first your idea doesn't work, think about how you can um, still make it happen by just changing. So look at that. Isn't that so adorable? I even have this layer right here is a very sheer um, ribbon, but I think because I used it towards the top, and then I'm gonna cover the top half of it with my last row of ribbon. Um, I think it works, especially since my cone is white and not green. Once I did get to the top, I went ahead and hot glued that little wood candle cup to be my little topper for my tree. And I think this is my second favorite project from this video. My first favorite is still coming up, but I love this. I have it on top of my coffee bar rack in my kitchen. DIY number five, I'm going to make over this cutting board into a baking gingerbread theme. I have this up in my kitchen year round, but I'm going to flip it over and on the back side, I'm going to have it go along with our theme. So I'm just on the very back, not on the sides, going to do kind of a messy paint job with my white Waverly chalk paint. And then we're going to let that dry. Then I have one of these mini rolling pins. I believe I ordered these on Amazon. They are in my Amazon storefront. I'm just going to paint that middle section with my crimson Waverly chalk paint and leave the handles the natural color. So paint that middle section and then let that dry. Then I have in my stash my stickers and I had some teal ones. They're pretty thin, but I thought they worked fine for this space. I'm going to spell out the words baking spirits bright, just starting with my middle letter and then working out to either side. Once the letters were done, I did decide I wanted to add some more color to this. So I took my crimson chalk paint again and a chip brush and I'm just going to kind of messy go around the edges. Um, of course, if this is not your decor style, feel free to leave it just a solid color. You could tape it off and do a solid stripe of red all the way around. But then I, you can see I just dry brushed some red also over that middle section and then let that dry completely before we finish putting our decorations on our cutting board. All I'm gonna do then is hot glue the rolling pin towards the bottom at an angle and then this gingerbread ornament, I believe was from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna glue that on as well. And then the last step will be to take some of this red and white striped ribbon and make a simple bow and we'll glue that to the top. If you're enjoying this video and love budget home decor, please give this video a thumbs up to let YouTube know this is content you want to keep seeing. For DIY number six, I'm going to make a simple sign with no words using this long board and five of these unfinished wood ornaments I picked up from Michaels and some paint and puffy paint. So for my background, I'm gonna use that lagoon colored chalk paint again and give my board the top and the sides this teal color. Then taking some wood filler, I'm gonna fill in that ornament hole at the top of each of my ornaments. This works really well. I'm pushing it in on the back there and then it just fills in the hole nicely on the front. We're not gonna see the backs anyway because we're gonna be 
gluing these down to our board. Once those were dry, I did spray paint my gingerbread with a, um, I believe it was an, or a warm caramel is the name of the spray paint. And then the two houses were the same colonial red that I did the cookie jar. Once I had them spaced out in the pattern that I wanted, I'm just hot gluing those down to the board. And then we will very shortly be finishing this project up. I just loved the simplicity of it with just the solid color on each ornament and no wording. I am going to use this white puffy paint I picked up at mm, Walmart. And I'm just outlining the little squiggles on the arms and legs of the gingerbread men. And then I'm going to do the roof line and the top of the chimney and the door on each of my two houses. For DIY number seven, I'm going to make a small item to add to my gingerbread kitchen. I had one of these ceramic signs from Dollar Tree and going through my scrapbook stash, I found this cute paper and I'm using this little piece that says sweet but twisted, but I didn't want the white. I wanted it to go with my color scheme. So I am painting the entire thing with that same teal paint. When it was dry, I did spray this with a matte finish clear spray paint so that the teal paint would not chip off. Then taking, like I said, that little um, cut apart card from my scrapbook paper. This was the same paper pad that I used the paper for the first project in this video, the snowflakes and the stripes. Um, and I just thought it went really well with the theme. So I trimmed it so that it would fit nicely on that sign. And then I'm just going to put some glue on the back and press that down and smooth it out on the front of the sign. And simple as that, you can just change up this little ceramic sign and make it for whatever theme you want. DIY number eight, the gingerbread house sign ended up being my favorite project from this video. Let me know what you think. I'm using one of these gingerbread cutouts from Dollar Tree, some red and white straws from Dollar Tree, some Scrabble tiles, and then this wood unfinished um, sign I got at actually a local grocery store of all places, but you could definitely find something in this shape. I'm going to do the entire inside with my white Waverly chalk paint and then taking that same teal color called Lagoon, I'm very carefully going to paint around the frame of our little house. Now these straws were actually really strong. They're like cardboard kind of, and I thought they would be so cute to outline on top of the teal. So I'm going to use about seven of them, and I'm going to glue them to the frame of my house. I will have to trim some, you can see there at the top, and then for the roof part, that's at an angle. But I'm just putting some hot glue on them and then setting them down on the frame. And I love how it looked when this red and white candy stripe was on top of the teal. This was definitely one of those projects where I had a basic idea, but then I just kind of kept adding things to it. And like I said, my favorite kind of project where it turns out even better than what you first imagined. 
And this is that spray paint I used on my gingerbread man in the previous project and on this one. Warm Caramel is what it's called with a satin finish. I popped off the wood buttons that were on there and I just added a couple of red buttons of my own to the front of my little gingerbread man here. And then we're going to take that white puffy paint again and just outline the little stripes there that are on his arms and his legs. The last thing I did to my little gingerbread man is I took my teal paint marker again, the same one I used to paint the letters for cookies on the cookie jar, and I'm coloring in his little bow tie just to go along better with our color scheme. I did not give my gingerbread man a face. I actually loved how it looked without and just kind of the idea of him. Then taking some Scrabble tiles, I have to spell gingerbread and house. I'm using this dowel at the bottom just so that I have a little bit of space and my letters are straight. Um, a little bit of space there between my row of letters and the bottom of the frame. So I started with my middle letter of house, which was the U, and then I'm going to just glue them one at a time till I have that entire word. And then the row above will say gingerbread. And so we'll find the middle letter, which is the R there and put it above the U and then get all of our letters glued down. Then we'll take our glue gun again and hot glue our gingerbread man above the words right up there. And you guys, I am in love with this sign. I just think it is so adorable, but it just needed one more finishing touch. Yes, another simple bow using this red grow green ribbon from Dollar Tree. Just tying it, we will trim the ends and we will hot glue this right at the tippity top of our house. Please be sure to check the description box below the video title for links to any items that you might be interested in, tools that I use, the stencils, all the links are there for you in the description box. For DIY number nine, I wanted to make a large felt gingerbread using two of these felt ornament kits, it says, and some stuffing and some other buttons and rickrack. So I had two of these kits that I bought. You get all of these little felt pieces, but they didn't really go with my color scheme. I did use the face pieces and then I used my own pink rickrack that I had and some red buttons. This is one of the wood buttons from the gingerbread man cut out. I'm going to use it on this little girl's bow. So I cut the four pieces to kind of go around the hands and the feet. We're gonna hot glue those on first, getting those all in place, and then we will trim the excess off. Then just glue on any other pieces you want, your buttons, your face pieces. I am gonna also add a bow to the top of the head using one of these um, burlap, pre-made bows that I had. I did trim the ends so they weren't covering the face. Hot glue that on. Then I did have one little piece of that red and white striped ribbon. I just made a loop here and I'm going to glue that loop together and then we'll glue the center of it down and we're just going to layer this on top of that burlap bow. So a little dot of hot glue pressed down the center We'll glue that on top of the burlap bow and then we're going to put that wood button that I painted with the teal paint marker on the center of her bow as well. Mm -hmm. 
Now, once everything was dry completely, I layered the second one right underneath and going around, starting with the head, I'm going to put a bead of hot glue and I'm going to glue my two gingerbread man shapes together. Um, like I said, I'm starting at the head and I'm going to hot glue the head together and then let that sit for oh, a couple minutes so that it doesn't come apart. You wanna make sure it's completely dry. And then I'm just taking some of this polyfill that I got from Walmart's craft department and I'm just going to stuff this slightly. This is kind of more of a stiff felt, so if you stuff it too much, it's gonna um, have some creases in it. Once I had the head done, I did an arm, a leg, an arm, a leg, until you get the whole thing stuffed and glued shut. I wanted my little gingerbread girl to be holding this super cute ornament, another one that I found at Dollar General. So I cut the hanger, the beads kept falling off, but I got them on, and I'm just putting a piece of a uh, dot of hot glue and attaching each end of the string so that it will look like she's holding it. Then back to my puffy paint, I'm just adding a few accents in the eyes, some circles on the cheeks, I am going to do a little dot on the nose and then I'm going to outline her entire body and head with the puffy paint. I really feel like it just brings the whole project together and makes it look so much more than two pieces of gingerbread man shaped felt. And here she is, so cute. You could stand her up, leaning her against um, on a shelf, or you could add a hanger to the back to hang her on the wall as well. And my final DIY for today is so simple. I have a hard time calling it a DIY, but I'm using these red and white striped sacks and another stencil from Magnolia Design Company just to show you how you could take something that was a dollar for these three adorable sacks. I'm going to just stencil this gingerbread man on the front of each of the three sacks using the, this is actually the gel art ink from a maker's studio, but it is their ink made for these type of stencils and for fabric. So just using some white. Um, now because the design on the bag was white and red stripes, it was more of an impression of a gingerbread man. I'll say that. It wasn't like a full-on stencil that you were going to be able to see for a long time. So I stenciled all three, took a little bit more of that polyfill just to stuff these, maybe look like they're little sacks of candy or treats, and then tie them shut. And that's really all I did. These are going to look so cute added to my shelf and my other decor in my gingerbread kitchen. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time.